Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Two weeks ago, I talked about how we are looking up and out from the plane of our own Milky Way galaxy. The problem is many of the deep sky objects at this time of year are faint and located here in the Virgo galaxy cluster region of the sky, east of Leo's tail star, Denebola. Now, this is a fantastic area if you have a moderately dark skies or a really large scope or both. If you don't, yeah, you may not see so much. So what galaxies are we more likely to see? Well, the brightest ones for most small scopes and light polluted areas at this time of year are two galaxies in Ursa Major. Although carrying Messier designations, the brighter one was actually discovered before Messier cataloged it by German astronomer Johann Bode. He was quite an accomplished astronomer who, despite having had an eye disease from an early age, became director of the Berlin Observatory in 1786. Bode correctly predicted the orbits of Uranus and Ceres, although the law named partly after him was later discredited upon the discovery of Neptune. However, his Uranographia was perhaps the height of both accuracy and artistic representation of the stars. Atlases subsequent to his focused more on precision of stellar positions than the art. And now this week's dark sky fact. This week I took a small step towards darker skies by installing some dark sky lighting of my own that cost all of $20. Remember, the sky belongs to everyone. What have you done this week for dark skies? For more information, visit darksky.org. So which galaxies are these that we might see? Messier 81 and 82, a pairing of galaxies that form a bit of an odd couple in the sky. Fortunately, they are bright enough to be seen with many small telescopes, though darker skies and larger instruments will help substantially. Start at the two bowl stars of the Big Dipper, Fad and Dubé. Draw an imaginary line from Fad through Dubé. That's about 10 degrees of sky. The two galaxies are nearly on that same line, another 10 degrees, so this will help you estimate the approximate location of them in the sky. Start at Dubé. With a 5 degree finder scope field of view, these two 5th magnitude stars should be visible. Draw an imaginary line from Dubé exactly between these two stars. Now that's 5 degrees of distance. You will need to move in exactly that direction, another 5 degrees, just short of the star 24 Ursa Majoris. Use very low power initially. If you do not see the galaxies, slowly scan the area with the slow motion controls of your telescope. The movement may help you make out the faint glow. M82 will look thin and narrow, like a faint cigar shape, and M81 will be a faint oval. M82 is a starburst galaxy furiously birthing new stars in star clusters near its core at 10 times the rate of our galaxy. M81 is a bit more of a sedate spiral. Both are galactic neighbors to each other and not too far relatively from our own Milky Way at about 12 million light years distance. And now an observing tip. Averted vision is an observing technique that takes advantage of the physiology of the human eye. Instead of looking directly at the eyepiece for a faint object, look slightly away from the object while maintaining focus of that particular area with your mind. Jupiter passes right between the double star Tau Tauri and the open cluster NGC 1647 on the 3rd and 4th of this week. Saturn is still just over 15 degrees from Spica. Watch this week as its brightest moon Titan starts on Monday far away from the planet and by Friday has revolved close to its southern pole. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes in the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.